Thoracic aortic pathology is a very uh, broad term that covers a lot of pathology uh, that covers all the way from acute aortic syndrome, uh, aortic trauma, ruptured aneurysms. So I'm going to quickly run through most of them as, 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 as uh, quick as we can. So acute aortic syndrome is basically the, uh, the, uh, the family of intramural hematoma penetrating ulcers and dissections, where intramural hematoma when it does happen because of damage to the vasovasorum, it can regress, it can resorb, but it is it has a very high potential as well to extend and progress into a dissection. The good thing about them is a lot, the majority of them are lo located in the descending aorta and are typically associated with hypertension, so they're slightly more easier to manage. However, some of them do progress to a dissection all the way up in the arch. Um, penetrating aortic ulcers um, as a deep ulceration of the atherosclerotic plaque, it can lead to intramural hematoma and aortic dissection and perforation. And the key here is that if a penetrating um, atherosclerotic ulcer is symptomatic with signs of deep erosion, they are more prone to rupture than others. So these patients in particular, endovascular stent grafting is becoming an attractive therapeutic modality on an emergent basis to a certain extent. And then moving forwards towards dissections, we all know our basic classification between the Bakey and the Stanford classification type A's and type B's. But we have to look a little bit closer at our type uh, B's that have retrograde um, uh, extension and how are we going to manage those. And currently, just, just last month, the SPS and the Society for Thoracic Surgeons have just uh, published their reporting standards for type B aortic uh, dissections. And in those reporting standards, they are recommending a new uh, classification for um, uh, 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 type B dissections or for type dissections in general. And namely, they're looking at the entry tear rather than the actual dissection flap. So if the entry tear is in zone zero, so then that's con considered a type A. Whereas if the entry tear happens beyond zone zero, it's a type B, even if there is a retrograde extension. So a type B, what's beside it there that says P and D, uh, is basically the, uh, the extent of the dissection from proximal to distal even though there might be a proximal extension into zone zero, but it's still a type B. And again, recommendations for what is considered complicated versus uncomplicated. And uncomplicated is when there's no rupture, no malperfusion, no high-risk features. So even if the patient has any of the high-risk features, like a readmission or an entry tear on the lesser curve or refractory pain, that is considered to be complicated. And that needs to be taken into account when we're going to be managing these patients. Uh, timing, hyperacute versus acute versus subacute and chronic, and the hyperacute is less than 24 hours, and an acute from 1 to 14 days. Again, why is timing important? You're going to see how the flap matures over time and eventually how the, um, the, the actual uh, false lumen starts to increase in size over time from roughly about six weeks. And we look at the ADSORB trial when they operated on patients within 48 hours, you'll see that those that were operated on had a composite uh, endpoint that was significantly in favor of uh, of uh, stenting within 48 hours with a, a, a significantly improved false lumen thrombosis. But, and uh, with, with equal uh, deaths within 30 days. However, when we look a little bit closer at outcomes and look at complications, you're going to see that within the hyperacute period, within the 24 hours, the in-hospital mortality, mortality at 30 days, paralysis, stroke, and, um, and renal failure was significantly higher in comparison to the acute phase. There was not a huge difference between acute and subacute. So if you can manage to tee the patient up to about 14 days uh, and do them within the acute phase, you definitely would be looking at a better outcome. So even in, in cases where you have a long extension of, of a dissection, um, you should be able to manage it with the T-VAR 
as long as you manage it within the acute phase rather than the hyperacute. The second group of pathologies is blunt aortic injuries or blunt traumatic aortic injury um, with 80% of patients that actually die before reaching a trauma center and those that do, they die within about 24 hours. But again, we have to differentiate between the different grades, a grade, grade one where there's an intimal tear versus intramural hematoma, pseudoaneurysms and an actual rupture. And looking at how to manage these uh, from the group from Hazim Safi, uh, the, the, the TVAR didn't differ from open repair when it came to long-term outcomes. And um, uh, looking at uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, meta-analysis comparing the outcomes of open versus uh, endovascular, you're going to see that mortality was significantly in favor of endovascular, similarly paraplegia, whereas stroke, even though it was higher in the open, uh, uh, in the endovascular group, it was not significantly different. And uh, looking at the SBS guidelines as to how to treat these patients, the suggestion is that we should be treating them endovascularly, urgent within 24 hours um, uh, and at the latest prior to hospital discharge. And however, those with minimal tears, we can, they, they, can, they suggest expected management with serial imaging for type 1 injuries. So if there's a minimal tear, then no intervention with option follow-up imaging, whereas if it's a moderate uh, and a hematoma, then semi-elective repair, whereas if there's a rupture, there's an immediate repair that needs to be done emergently, and that takes priority. Ruptured uh, thoracoabdominal aneurysms aren't as, uh, as common, thankfully, as um, uh, abdominal aortic aneurysms. However, uh, in, 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 uh, it does make it challenging because you sometimes do end up in a situation in an, in an emergency setting where you would need to do um, a hybrid uh, repair. Which can be quite challenging in, in, in the presence of a rupture. Um, uh, where you uh, debranch the visceral vessels and then uh, put in your, your, your uh, stent. Fenestrated grafts, unfortunately, are not really a, a, a great option in the case of emergencies um, uh, due to availability on, on the shelf. Um, I'm just going to quickly run through our own practice where we had uh, on, did a total of 171 TVARs. Of those, 52 were emergencies. And we were unlucky enough to actually have 17 of those to be ruptured aneurysms, thoracoabdominal aneurysms where the majority were dissections and uh, transections. And um, we performed selective spinal drainage, um, and we only oversize in cases of aneurysms. We don't oversize for trauma or for, for dissections. And um, you can see here the spread of the uh, pathology between the ruptured aneurysms, dissections, and, and the rupture. The mean hospital stay was 22 days. Oh, and graft migration happened in one case with re-intervention in four cases. 30-day mortality, six cases. Stroke happened in two of them. Paraplegia in one patient and lower limb and bowel ischemia in one patient, with a total overall mortality at five years of 38%. So in conclusion, TVAR, as long as you manage to uh, control uh, uh, with CSF uh, drainage and occasionally you might need to debranch or uh, chimney into the visceral vessels, can be economically, is, is a safe option in cases of acute thoracic aortic uh, pathology, but timing is crucial uh, both in uh, trauma and in type B dissections. Thank you.